Here's how to try and create a spreadsheet to handle the calculation of your uncertainties. I've typed in a few column headings. We've got mean voltage, scale reading uncertainty, calibration uncertainty, random uncertainty, the uncertainty in the voltage and the percentage uncertainty in voltage. And the first thing I would notice is the mean voltage column is not wide enough. If I double click on the column separator, then it makes the column wide enough. Secondly, I've uh, gotten fed up putting in my units for every single uncertainty. So I just wanted it to see all values in volts across there so I can select those cells and then merge in there. I wouldn't put that for the percent uncertainty because that doesn't have any units. The scale reading uncertainty, put that in first, that's 0 0.001 volts. That's the smallest digit that's on the meter. Um, it's going to be the same value right away down the column. I would quickly get fed up typing it all in. So if I type it in twice, highlight both, and then use the small rectangle at the bottom right hand corner of the two cells and drag that down, then it should just fill in the rest for you. Um, let's get the mean voltage. So use a formula, so press the uh, equals key and then type in average. Open a normal bracket. Click from the first number that you want to be averaged and drag your way along to the last one. Close the bracket and press enter on the keyboard. That tells you your average is 1.413. Again, I don't really want to have to do this all the way down, but I'll sort that later. Calibration uncertainty. Now we said the calibration uncertainty would be at 0.5% of the value. So this will be a formula which will be equal to 0.5% multiplied by the mean voltage. Now the multiply on a spreadsheet is to use the asterisk key, which is, is not an X, but it's a shift on the 8 key. So then I want to multiply that by the mean voltage, so click on the cell for me is G5 and press enter, and that gives me the 0.5%, five, that's my calibration uncertainty. Next up I need the random uncertainty. Now that's the maximum minus the minimum divided by the number of number. Now there's a number of numbers. A little bit more work to do there. So what I've done, I'm just going to show you something uh, that's going on with the maximum and the minimum and the count. So I've just copied that first set of voltages down here. And there's a formula that I can use to get the maximum equals max. Open the brackets, select the range, close the bracket, press enter. There's also a formula that gives you the smallest or the minimum. And the last thing you need is a formula which gives you the number of numbers that you have. And I'm going to use count A instead of just plain count. The advantage of count A is that if there is a missing value, it will reduce the count. So here I've got my five values. And it tells me there's five values. Now if one of these values was, was missing for some reason, then it's four, um, which is what you want because you, you may find in some of your results you cannot get uh, as many repeats as you wanted. So it's important to use count A or it'll leave you wrong results. Now this is no use as it is. I need this to be one single formula. So I'm going to put that into random uncertainty. I'm going to need some brackets. So equal sign, uh, bracket, max. Open the bracket for the max formula. Select the range. Close the bracket. Subtract off the minimum. Open the bracket for the minimum formula. Select the range again. Close the bracket. Close the bracket which performs the subtraction max minus min, performs the top of the fraction. Divide by count A, open the bracket for the count formula, select the range again so it counts how many numbers there are, close that bottom of the fraction, press enter. It gives you the random uncertainty. So far so good. Now I need to combine all of the uh, scale reading calibration and random uncertainties using the square root of the squares. So the formula is equal S Q R T for square root bracket. Click on the scale reading uncertainty and I need that to be squared. So the symbol for this is called the caret. 
and that's on the six key shift and six so that gives you squared add on the calibration uncertainty which is in the next column squared and finally add on the random uncertainty which is to be squared close your bracket press enter there's too many decimal places there but we can fix that by formatting the column the last part is to get the percentage uncertainty in the value so the percentage uncertainty in the value is equal to the uncertainty in the value itself divided by the mean value now you can just enter that that's not a percentage you can format it as a percentage changing the number format or you can multiply by a hundred depends on what you prefer um, and what you're wanting to do so that's it now as a percentage I don't need this anymore so I was just putting that in to show you how to use the formula last step is I would like to replicate all of this down through all my results so I highlight all of the stuff that I've put in um, that will mess up the scale reading uncertainty but not to worry fix that again click on the small green square drag that down in order to pick up the replication of a plain old number Excel needs to have two numbers next to each other and these should all just be the same point zero zero one so what have we got there it's calculated for us all of the means and all of the calibration uncertainties which kind of become less significant the random uncertainties the total uncertainty in voltage and then the percentage uncertainty and that's it